and honored to be here with you today in ATL. Uh, how many people know MC Light? We grew up together, right? Yes, we did. So in the midst of growing up, being, y'all can take a seat, in the midst of growing up and being on camera and off camera and having many chances to get it right financially, in between there I met a, a woman who I like to call my show and tell. Uh, her name is Dr. Lynn Richardson. I met her through Russell Simmons, and she still remains one of the COOs of one of his organizations um, called HSAN. So after uh, Lynn approached me and asked me, did I want to start a foundation? I said, absolutely I do. And four months later, we had 501c3 status. We've given away over a million dollars in scholarships to young people, yes, furthering their education. We call her the Medea of money. She's a financial guru. If you have pen and paper or you take your phone, you can write some notes that might really change your life. Be open-minded and take in all of the gems that she's about to drop. Dr. Lynn Richardson, please join us on the stage, please. Hey, Atlanta. Hey, everybody. Give it up for MC Light. 50 years of hip hop. before we get started. MC Light was not feeling well today. As a matter of fact, she wasn't feeling well yesterday, the day before. And so um, I just have to say thank you, Light, for being so true to your Atlanta fans that you got Absolutely. up and came here anyway. Absolutely. Give her a round of applause. Thank you, thank you. And I'm just thanking God. He's keeping me together until I fall out on that bed. One more. <laughs> One more year, but they already know how it is. Yeah. Thank you so much for traveling in from Los Angeles to be here today. I think um, this is our last day of being on the Ultimate Women's Expo Tour. For this year. For this year, yeah. yeah. We, we've been at a, in about eight different cities, but nothing like ATL. Nothing like ATL. Right. So, so glad to be here with you all. Big ups to Lonnie Love, my sister, in the name of entertainment and everything that's right. But you... You are such a wealth of knowledge. And I know that we have been out on this tour before, and it was before the pandemic. And before the pandemic, people are struggling to get their finances right. What do you think has changed after the pandemic? Are people still struggling or? Well, let me just say this. Before the pandemic, and I, we came here every year, 2019, 2018, 2017, we came here year after year. And before the pandemic, I was telling everybody to get a home-based business. I was talking about it, preaching about it, talking about it. And then 2020 hit, and everybody was in the house. And guess what? Everybody needed a home-based business. But the main thing that I wanna help you all understand, the difference between before the pandemic and after the pandemic, is that we have had an opportunity to learn a big lesson. You see, before I get into what it is that you need to do with your money, I think it's important for you to know a little bit more about me. I was born and raised in Chicago. My grandmother, hey now, Chateau. My grandmother was 75 years old, years old, cleaning homes for wealthy people putting me through college. She taught me to go to school, get a good education, get a good job, go to church on Sunday, wear clean underwear in case you get hit by a bus. Is that in the grandmama book? I used to think, if I get hit by a bus, will I have on any underwear when they come find me? But you know, that's a whole other story. So she taught me all those things about money, but I didn't really know what to do with money. I never felt poor, but I knew we weren't rich. You know, I never remember being hungry or needing money for food. So when I would ask my grandmother for money, she'd tell me to look in the room on top of the shelf, behind the box, inside my pocketbook, inside a zipper, wrapped up in a piece of paper towel, it's $20. And so when I got off to college, I was at one of the world's, you know, at most prestigious academic institutions, and I was on scholarship. So the first week of school, I was in a room about this size. They had credit card people all around the room. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. And so while everybody was trying to pick one credit card, I decided to pick one of each. That did not go well for me. I could not pay anybody. When the creditors would call and say, Lynn, can you borrow the money? I'd say, can I borrow it from you? I had all kind of funny answers until I got out to the real world. My credit was jacked up. My furniture came from Renaissance Center. And I entered my adult life 
really behind the eight ball like a lot of people are now before and after the pandemic. So fast forward, I start helping people buy homes. I helped a lady with four bankruptcies and two foreclosures overcome her credit issues. She got into a house with a low interest rate and low down payment. So I became a radio personality. I'm helping people all over, but I was living a lie. You see, I was making lots and lots and lots of money. I was married, three children, big house, biggest house in the subdivision, but I was not practicing what I preached. You see, I was living check to Monday. Do y'all know what that is? Check to check is a blessing. That means you get paid on Friday and by the next payday you're broke. But check to Monday is a whole nother game. You get paid on Friday, you kick it on the weekend, you pay all your past due bills because in your mind, your current bills are not due yet. Can I get an amen? And by Monday, you're broke. And I was living that lifestyle, making 20,000, 50,000, 80,000, 90,000 dollars a month. Not a year, a month. And I know some of you are thinking, you have your situation right now. And you might be thinking to yourself, if I made $50,000 a month or $80,000 a month, there was no way I would be broke. But I need you to understand this, and this is why I work with Light and so many other celebrities and everyday people and been on the Steve Harvey show and all of that. More money doesn't solve a money problem. If it did, millionaires wouldn't go bankrupt. So what people have to do after the pandemic is go back to the basics. So for every dollar you get, the first 10% of every dollar you get, you tithe. Say tithe. Tithe. Now, I started tithing when I was broke. My big fat corporate paycheck stopped up here, but my bills kept going all the way down here. So I realized I was broke if I, if I, whether I tithed or not. It wasn't like if I kept the tithe the money, I was straight. I started tithing so at least I could have God on my broke side when I pray. Can I get an amen? The next 10% of every dollar you get, you save. Say save. Save. And that's not just for a rainy day. Like my grandmother told me to save in case something breaks down. But you need to save for a come up. Say come up. Come up. A come up is when the price of major assets goes down and you can buy it cheap and then you can reap the benefits when it goes up. Like when the stock market crashed during the pandemic. Listen, there's gonna be a real estate crash. When real estate goes down, you need to have enough money for a come up so that you can buy low and sell high. The next 30% is cash on a separate debit card. Say cash on a separate debit card. Cash on a separate debit card. Now, this is for your incidentals, like groceries, gas, hair, and nails. If it doesn't fit, get rid of it. And the reason why you wanna keep it separate is to avoid a spending addiction. Do you know what a spending addiction is? Well, just in case you're confused, a spending addiction is what you have when you go to the grocery store for toothpaste and walk out with $179.47 worth of stuff you don't need, talking about it was on sale, right? Has anybody ever done that? Right. Now, the biggest reason is you want to avoid deals at the state. Deals at the state are items that we buy in 2023 that aren't worth the ashes we can burn them to. I need you to understand this. I work for some of the world's biggest global icons. I was just sitting in a room Wednesday night with MC Light, LL Cool J, uh, Public Enemy, Flavor Flav, uh, I mean everybody in the hip hop industry. And what I want you all to know about people who make money is people who make money study you. People who make money study the number one commodity on the planet and that is black women. They study how we walk, they study how we talk, they study how we think. And what they then do is they go make something for $10 and then they figure out a way to get you to buy it for $200 and make you stand in line on Black Friday to get it. So we are not in a financial condition because we're not smart enough. We're in a financial condition because we have been taught for generations that when we get money, we gotta show the world we got it, okay? And when we show the world we got it, we do it with furniture and jewelry and clothing and hair and purses. So I want you to understand this. Rich people stay rich because they act poor. And poor people stay poor because they act rich. And poor people stay poor acting rich in front of other poor people, which is real crazy. So what we need to start doing 
is forget what people think. Say forget what people think. Forget what people think. So, when we start buying things, there are things like deals that think like $500 rims on a $500 car. We don't want that. $150 shoes for feet with cords on them. Get some flip flops, right? And ladies, from this day forward, now I want you all to think about this. No matter whether it was a recession, the depression, or a pandemic, do you understand that no purse company has ever gone out of business? They don't go out of business. So from this day forward, we will live by the universal purse test, which says, if the purse costs more than the amount of money you can keep in it on a regular basis, leave it on the rack. If you go to the rack, $300 purse, self, do you usually have $300? Uh-uh. $20 purse, self, that's usually how much you get. That's the purse you get off the rollback rack. There you go. And start stacking your dollars. So the first 10% you do what? Time. The next 10%? Save. The next 30%? Cash on a separate debit card. And the remaining 50% stays in your checking account for your bills. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. I love that scientific breakdown. Because one plus you, one you still equals live, two. You still do the 10, 10, 30, 50, I right? I do. I still do the 10, 10, 30, 50. I think it's so important because a lot of a lot of times people will just have a little bit of money here, a little bit of money there, just holding on to it for no good reason outside of really handling your business and making sure that bills get paid on time, Yeah. which I think is really important. So. Tell me this, Lynn, why is it so important that people have multiple streams of income? Okay, so it's in, I want everybody to get this, okay? Everybody must have multiple streams of income. You need more than one stream of income. No longer is it the rule that you can go to school, get an education, get a job, and retire in 40 years. One stream of income is hazardous to your health. One stream of income is hazardous to your wealth. So you want to have more than one stream of income. But here's the most important reason. Everybody needs to have a home-based business. And let me tell you why. Because you need to learn how to get your money back. Say, get your money back. Get your money back. Now, the first thing that we just talked about is spending less money and putting money in the right column so you'll have enough. But for most people, we still don't have enough money. But you need to also get your money back. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. If you went to the grocery store and you spent $200 on groceries, and you came home, fixed your food, ate your groceries, did all of that, and then the grocery store manager called you two weeks later and said, come back and get your money. You can keep the groceries, but come back and get your money. You would stop, drop, and roll. Well, when you have a home-based business, that's what the IRS says. The IRS says you can get your money back. So when you spend your money on a cell phone, if you use your cell phone for personal reasons, you don't get your money back. But if you use your cell phone for business reasons, you do. When you drive your car for personal reasons, you don't get your money back. But when you drive your car for business reasons, you do. When you go out to eat, you go out to eat with your cousins, your friends, your boo, whoever. When you go out to eat and you just talk and drink for personal reasons, you don't get your money back. But when you go out to eat for business reasons, you do. So the IRS says this hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. That's why you have to have a home-based business. Now that home-based business can be a sole proprietorship or it can be a single member LLC that operates as a sole proprietorship. Let me tell you a very true story. Two beauticians, they both do hair. One beautician, every time she gets paid, she collects her money, she gets it by sale or cash app, and then she starts spending the money. She buys food, she buys new hair products. The other beautician, my beautician, because she follows what I taught her, when she gets her money, when it comes in through Zelle or Cash App or PayPal or whatever, she takes all her money, puts it in her bank account. Then she spends her money. So when the pandemic hit and nobody could go to the beauty shop, beautician number A had to wait on a $600 unemployment check. Beautician number B 
who was running her business like a business with the intent of making a profit from it, she got a $60,000 check in a couple of weeks, okay? So it's important. Now, here's one of the biggest reasons why you need a home-based business. Does anybody here have kids? Anybody got kids? Okay. Anybody got nieces and nephews? Little cousins? Yeah. Got our children, okay. So my grandmother was the oldest of 17 kids. So she fed everybody. She was even her mother's midwife for many of those kids. So she fed everybody, she cooked, she did all of that, she raised everybody. I'm gonna tell you right now, kids are expensive. And if I had 17 kids, everybody would eat every day, okay? I'd have a Monday, Wednesday group and a Tuesday, Thursday group. And on your day out, you'd have to fast, pray, and steal. I don't know what to tell you. But the point is, the IRS says, when you have children, you can hire your child to work in your home-based business. This is IRS Publication 15, page 13. You can Google it now. You can hire your kids to work in your home-based business. You can pay each child up to $13,200 a year. That money is a tax write-off to you. That means you get it back. And that money is tax-free to your child. So instead of you going to buy Christmas toys, video games, all of those things, instead you pay the child a salary, give them a job in your home-based business, now you get the money back and they can go buy the things that you were gonna pay for anyway. So what you gotta understand is that money will work harder for you than you can ever work for it. You just have to learn how it works and put it in the right column. So having a home-based business has many benefits. And one of the biggest ones is making sure you can get your money back. Thank you. Thank you. You can give a round of applause. Let me tell you, she is dropping these gems that other people have lived by for decades. But now this is generation. Generation. A lot of people have been living by these principles for generations. And we keep wondering why is everybody else getting ahead except for us? And it's simply because we don't have the knowledge. Absolutely. You talked about multiple streams of income. You talked about a home-based business. Now, some of these people probably don't believe they have what it takes to have a home-based business. What are some of the talents and the gifts that could go into being a home-based business? Okay, so here's a, here's a, here's a big thing I want everybody here. Every single person. All, everybody here, all the way around, and everybody in between. This is what you must understand. There is a gift that you have that you can monetize. There's a skill that you have that you can monetize. There is knowledge that you have that you can monetize. So if you're trying to figure out what kind of business should I start, I want you to think about these three things. First of all, what do you do naturally? What do you naturally do? Some of you naturally give advice. Maybe you're a coach. Some of you naturally counsel people. Some of you naturally cook. Some people naturally do hair. Some people naturally organize things. I naturally talk. I came out talking. I used to get whooped all the time with a switch by my grandmother for talking back. And eventually talking started making me money. So you want to think about what you do naturally. The next thing you want to think about is what are you skilled at? What do you do that people say to you, you do this so well and you just blow it off? You don't even think about it. That is probably a stream of income, okay? And then the third thing is, what are you passionate about? What is it that keeps you up at night? What is it that makes your heart beat faster? What is it that you feel so passionate about that you're willing to give it your time and your energy? So every single person here has multiple things that you can do in those categories. Like, it's all about discovering what they are, like, First of all, MC Light is a serial entrepreneur. She is the voice of everything, right? Everything. So she does voiceover, DJ, acting. Like, now she's a producer, director. All of the things that she likes to do naturally, she went from being in front of the camera, but what she really likes to do is tell people what to do in front of the camera, so then she became a director. So you have those same abilities as well. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, did that ring a bell for anybody? In terms, yeah, because I know we all have 
innate talent. We're all multi-talented, really. Yeah. And so we're blessed to get the opportunity to tap into some of those other things and kind of have them graduate into a full business. So what can someone do in the next 90 days to get started? Um, okay, so in the next 90 days, um, let me show you this. Let's show this video. Let's, let's see what we got here. We have been giving away scholarships. So we're going to give away $25, $2,500 scholarships for those who want to learn more about getting their money straight, getting their business straight, and all those things. And you'll get access to a whole bunch of classes. How to start a home-based business. How to stop living check to Monday. How to build your business credit. Like there's a, a dozens of classes. If you click the QR code on the little card that you have, you'll see them all there. And these classes are taught by myself, MC Light, several of our Diamond members who have been learning with us and that are even here in the audience. You get books, Living Check to Monday. You get The Symphony. You get MC Light's Unstoppable. You get a budgeting journal so you can start to track your expenses. You get how to uh, hire your kid. <laughs> is here in the house and we are going to have a great time today. Dr. Lynn, 
Um, how, what kind of advice would you give a single mother of a kid with a disability on how to escape the cycle of poverty and, you know, government assistance and, and living check to check when you already have a lot? Excellent question. Um, first of all, my prayers are with you and I hope that my strategy can be with you. And I'm going to tell you what I would do if I was you. See, a lot of people will try to make you feel bad because you are on public assistance or whatever the case may be. I was on food stamps in 2008. Do you understand me? I was on food stamps in this century with a whole degree. I graduated from one of the top schools in the world with a degree in economics, math, and finance. Yet I found myself in a situation. I had also filed bankruptcy, not once. I filed a, a chapter 13 and, and paid it off. And then in 2008, when the recession crashed, I, found, I filed bankruptcy again. I gave up my beloved champagne, beautiful with the gold trim on the inside, Lexus. I started over and I went and got food stamps. And I did not send anybody. I went. And I'm a very well-known person in Chicago. And so when I went to the public aid office, all I could think about was hoping nobody recognized me. But somebody did. And at that point, it didn't matter. Because I knew that if I had two things, and I don't want to get emotional, but if I had food on the table, feed my kids, and if I had a roof over my head, I knew I could make it. So I didn't have to worry about food. I didn't have to worry about a roof over my head. So now I can put my energy into my business. I don't want you worrying about food. And I don't want you worried about a roof over your head. So if you have to get on public assistance, section A, live with your grandmama or whatever, do it. Second, make sure you have a tribe because you're going to need support with your child. I needed support. So although I'm married and have been for a long time and have a supportive husband, my husband had to go out and try to work to try to make the little extra money just to pay the light bill and the gas bill. Y'all know, do y'all know that I know what I'm talking about, what it means to be broke? So this is not an act for me. This is very real, but you need a support system. You need somebody to help get him to school or pick him up or watch him, right? The third thing that I would do, if I was you, I would go to school and learn something. Whatever it is that you're passionate about, get all of the financial aid that you can. Get your refund check. And with your refund check, Make sure that you are maintaining not just your basic household, but you're finding ways to pour into whatever it is that you're learning about to do. And then just keep going. You cannot fail until you quit. If you fall seven times, get up eight. If you fall nine times, get up 10. But it's not how you fall down, it's how you get up. And it's that you get up. And the last thing that I would say to you is to surround yourself with a community of people who are trying to go where you're trying to go. See, I had to leave people behind. Everybody who did not believe me when I quit my job at one of the world's top financial institutions and told them I was going to work in hip hop, I didn't know Russell Simmons, I didn't know MC Light, I didn't know anybody, but I knew God. So if you have God on your side, get going. Forget haters, naysayers, blockers, and crab barrel leg pullers. Put all them behind you. Don't make a big announcement. Just be quiet and watch God work. I can't wait to work with you. Thank Amen. you for asking your question. Amen. Amen. Woo. This is an ordained minister too. I, I think we might have left that out. Minister preacher, gangster teacher <laughs> from Chicago. We appreciate gangsters the West number one. <laughs>
Yeah, any more questions? Yeah, yeah, I went over here. I'm over here to the to your right, to your stage. Okay, we're over here. All right, tell me your name, where you're from, and ask your question. Thank you, ladies. This is my question. My name is Stacy Jenkins. I'm from Macon, Georgia. I want to know. Um, I ran for office a few years ago. Didn't get elected, but I'm always thinking about my community. How can I get a scholarship to some of the ladies that live in my city? That a lot of times they're being exploited for wanting to be able to take advantage of the new movement of black-owned businesses. I see a lot of times they're exploited. How can we get this? in connection with some of the ladies that I know in my city. I would love to help you. I would love to have a partnership with you. So if you've got questions like how to partner together to make these uh, services and classes available, just go to asklin.org. Go to asklin.org, state that you met me here, and then one of my uh, VPs or my senior vice president will reach out to you and have a discussion so we can figure out something that can work out, okay? I appreciate that. Thank That's you. awesome. And run again. Run again. Yes, and run again. Absolutely. All right, we have time for two more. It's good. We got one right here. Tell, yes. you, tell them your name, where you're from, and ask your question. Hi, my name is Tracy. I'm from Rockdale County. I have a question about trucking. If a trucking business uses the home address, does it constitute for all of this other that you're speaking of? Yes. That's an excellent question. Thank you for asking it. So this is a very important question, everybody. What she just asked is, she has a trucking business. And does her trucking business qualify as a home-based business? Let me tell you what makes your business qualify as a home-based business. If you do your administrative work at home, then it's a home-based business. Let me give you two examples. If you do hair, and you just go around and you do people's hair and they come to your house, that's a home-based business. But if you actually own a salon, it is not, okay? Now, I'm not saying don't own the salon. Yes, you wanna have multiple businesses. So you may wanna have a corporation, an escort, a LLC with other people. But if you own a salon and you're trying to figure out how to have a home-based business, then maybe you will do hair care consulting from home, right? Maybe you will make wigs from home. But as long as you are doing your administrative work, so if you drive Uber, yes, you have to go out and get in the Uber, but you handle your business at home. If you sell Mary Kay, if you sell health care, skin care products, so yes, that does qualify as a home-based business. Thank Excellent you. question. Yeah, thank you oh, for that question. that's important too, because when you have a home-based business, you get to write off a percentage of your rent, your light bill, your gas bill, everything that it takes. Now I want you to think about this. Let's say your rent is $1,500 a month and you get to write off 30% of your expenses. That means you get to write off $500 a month. 500 times 12 is 6,000. That's just your rent. What about your light bill? What about your gas bill? What about your landscaping? What about air conditioning? Like all the things that you have to pay for. So the money starts to add up really quickly when you're thinking about getting your money back. That's a great question. Thank you for asking. Thank you, ladies. This is the last question. I'll tell them your name, where you're from, and then ask your question. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Marlene. I'm, from, I, I'm calling from, my apologies. I'm from <laughs> Miami, Florida. I'm calling from the side of the right. stage. It's okay. <laughs> Marlene from Miami, Florida. Um, I've already established a home-based business, but my ears perked up when you mentioned uh, the kids and paying them a salary. So uh, my question is, would my um, entity type have to be an escort? Because currently, right now, I'm a single member LLC, a sole proprietorship, but my kids actually help me with the work in terms of the stuff for their books. I wrote books for them. My booth is right outside here, but they do, you know, the packaging, the sign legitimate work so I said okay let me ask a little bit more about how to get that going with paying them. Excellent question. So IRS publication 15 page 13 breaks it down. It must be a sole proprietorship or a single member LLC that operates as a sole proprietorship. It does not work if it's an S corp. It does not work if it's a corporation. If it's a corporation or an S corp now you have to abide by the child labor laws. 
The Department of Labor says that a child of any age, this is how the baby, the Gerber baby gets to work and the Huggies baby gets to work. A child of any age can work in entertainment. So let's say you hire your infant to be a model in your YouTube video that's advertising your business. You are actually able to do that and legitimately document it. If your younger children, my kids, when I took them to Disney World in 2008, I went to speak at my sorority's conference, but guess what they were doing with your kids? They were packaging up books. They were working the table. And so I never say they're helping. They're working, right? So they're always working. So yes, now one of the classes in the scholarship packet is how to hire your kids and get your money back. And what you get with that is how to hire them, job descriptions, reporting, um, chores that they can do as a home-based business uh, work uh, items. So thank you, that's an excellent question. And congratulations, I'm happy for you. All right, one more time for MC Light and Dr. Lynn Richardson. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank for you so much. And so for those of you who get your scholarship packages today, you'll have a call with MC Light tonight at 8 p.m. So make sure that you are someplace sitting ready for that and you'll get your one uh your one-on-one -on -one a little bit later in the week and um, i'm looking forward we're looking forward to helping as many of you all create the empire that she has created god bless you all god bless thank you so much